2022 town board meeting to order. Ms. Marco, please call the roll. Mr. Cristo? Present. Mrs. Miller Herrera is absent. Mr. Dodson? Present. Mr. Mastriani? Present. And Mrs. Collins? Present. Four present, one absent. Thank you, Ms. Marco. Quorum is present. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance with our controller, Mr. Montgomery. Please lead us. Pledge of the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to remind everybody that this um, Friday uh, we will be having our um, Veterans Day services at 2.30 here at Town Hall. If we get the rain from the hurricane that we're expecting, we will move it inside into the boardroom. But I really hope that a lot of us turn out to honor the men and women who have served our country so well. So please, uh, if you can make it 2.30 on Friday, I'd, you know, I'd appreciate it. Uh, we do have an executive session. Uh, do I have a motion for this board to go into executive session? I'll make that motion. I'll motion. second. Motion by Mr. Christou, second by Mr. Dodson. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller is absent. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes and one absent. And just, just for the record, the purpose of the executive session is listed on the agenda. Yeah, they didn't give me a chance to say it. Yeah. All right, so uh, we will be entering into exec executive session at 7.01. Okay, uh, motion passed uh, to return from executive session unanimously and we return to 7.27. I will now open the public... I'm sorry, my, this one never works. Okay. I will open the public hearing on the draft town of Rotterdam comprehensive plan. Ms. Marco, is there anyone who wishes to speak? Jim Schaefer? Thank you very much. My name is Jim Schaefer, uh, resident of Rotterdam, 39 Skimmerhorn Road. I uh, rise to address two issues. <clears throat> the, the funding in the budget. We thank you very much for the proposed uh, coverage of the Rotterdam Conservation Advisory Committee, of which I have been serving since its inception, and also for the town historian position, which I currently occupy. But I have more on my mind than the funding. Uh, I like the comprehensive plan very much. And I especially like the provision to preserve and protect key natural resources and critical environmental areas, including the Great Flats Aquifer. And I really like the idea of preserving and pr uh, protecting farmlands and the support of local agricultural economy. If we go back in 350 years ago, uh, Aaron Van Curler, upon seeing the Mohawk Valley from the bluffs over by Bellevue, said that he saw the most beautiful land the eye of man ever beheld. From a, from a Hollander's perspective, that meant farmland and woodland. The beauty of the Rotterdam Hill Country cannot be denied. The Plotter Kill, the Moccasin Kill, down Putcherburg to the west, remains a beautiful area with a quilt, patchwork quilt of land with tributaries and woods. Vistas from the top show spectacular views that we all in Rotterdam value tremendously. The Schoharie Valley to the west and the south and the Mohawk Valley to the west and the comprehensive plan goals embrace Van Curler's vision in a very important way. But in the short period of time, within 10 years, we have seen solar energy panels on roofs and then fields in Rotterdam. And one project caught my eye recently, and that is a 20 megawatt project up on the top of Rhinex Corners Road uh, and near Young Butcherburg, Crawford Road area. This is a very special area with beautiful vistas. And the solar energy project is going to take a huge amount of forest, land, shrubs, grasslands, and habitat for animals. 
I therefore, because of the lack of planning in Rotterdam for solar energy, I think it's time that we take time to study these issues, to properly put together plans, ordinances, and regulations to make sure that we have addressed the environmental impact of solar energy panels. I call for a moratorium on approval of any solar energy projects in Rotterdam until the town is properly planned and approached that protects our values and our habitat. We need time to work through the economics of renewable energy. We need to create ordinances. Let me give you an example. And I know with continuing budget problems with a 2% cap, uh, and we're living in an era, era of 8% inflation currently, it makes sense to look at alternative funding streams that do not directly add to the burden of taxpayers, while at the same time serve to protect natural spaces or green spaces that are facing public-private challenges. Our neighbor across the river, Glenville, has found a way to bolster dollars for town use outside of the levy. They have instituted a contribution requirement of the town parkland fund for all new solar energy systems. I think Rotterdam should pay close attention to what Glenville's done. They call it Solar for Parks. This is a new fee structure authorized by the Home Rule provision and mandates that $10,000 per acre be paid by the developer to a town fund for parks. It essentially connects the development of green space with an, with an assessment fee to explicitly offset new energy impacts, protecting open space. The fee allows for town governmental needs while addressing the loss of <coughs> trees, shrubs, grass, and wetland vegetation, which after all produces oxygen and captures carbon dioxide. The concept protects accompanying aesthetics of vistas and the essential part of an open space, green space ethos, which I think that we value in Rotterdam. Glenville's code is in the books and needs to be looked at, maybe we need to adopt it. So in the end, I think it makes a lot of sense for us to declare a moratorium on energy development by the town. My mother said one time, stand up, say what you gotta say, and then sit down, and that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Gina, Joe, but I can't read the last name, I'm sorry. I'd like to remind everybody, it's not that we don't want to listen to your opinions, we do, but we have a four minute limit. Um, usually around three and a half minutes, you'll see me wave my hand so you can give me a look every once in a while and then wrap up. If not, unfortunately, you know, um, then everybody just takes longer and longer, okay? So thank you. Hi, my name is Gina Regula and I live on Crawford Road. Good evening, everyone. First, I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you tonight. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Gina Regula, and I live at the top of Crawford Road. I've lived in the same property for over 50 years, a property that has been owned by my family for more than 100 years. My grandmother, Sadie, and her husband bought the farm on top of the hill. I grew up learning from my grandfather, Harold C. Goodnow, how to grow vegetables, raise animals, provide food for family and friends. I remember him delivering bushels of potatoes, fresh eggs, and other vegetables to his friends and family, cutting firewood and bringing in hay. The same things my family continues to do today. This is the same property where I raised my daughter, Sadie. I taught her to, present, to respect and preserve nature to defend her neighbors and stand up for what is right. Which brings me to why I'm here tonight. The proposed solar farm that is to be installed on Sanborn Road, if approved, would clear, would mean clear cutting and destroying 100 or more acres of woodland habitat. I remember several years ago when approximately 100 acres of forest was logged on the east side of Crawford Road Mountain. 
If you drive in Rexford along the river, instead of seeing a picturesque forested mountainside of Rotterdam in the far off distance, you see a huge blemish left from the large logging project in the side of the mountain. However, my neighbors and surrounding residents in the area have seen something very different. We saw an increase in the number of fishers, families of foxes, and bears. These sightings were a rare occurrence prior to the logging. We still see these wild animals daily. You see, like us, they adapted. Remember our residents who drove to Skaheri to buy their eggs? The fishers and foxes had to adapt as well. They did not go to Skaheri, though. They went to mine and some neighbors due to chickens and guinea hens we raised. The bears learned how yummy the contents of my neighbor's bird feeders and my husband's beehives. We also found what a mess bears can make out of garbage cans. When you take away their habitat, they have no choice but to relocate and adapt. Even if that means they take up residence under the front porch. Now, I'm not here to discuss what came first, the chicken or the fox. But I do have to say, I'm seeing a pattern here. Every time property is clear for buildings or solar projects, it destroys the habitat of our animals and takes away the beauty of our town. The beauty that makes Rotterdam a nice place to live. Just because, sorry, I'm not done. <laughs> Just because the trees and wildlife do not have a voice does not mean that it is abandoned or underutilized land. Because it is clearly the wildlife's habitat, and they agree Rotterdam is a nice place to live. I'm very happy to see that the Rotterdam Comprehensive Plan states it's looking to preserve the unique beauty and resources Rotterdam has. But the plan needs to include specifications regarding large-scale clean energy projects. A moratorium is needed to establish and put on hold any proposals so that we can keep Rotterdam a nice place to live. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Jean Brown. I am Jean Brown. I live at 143 Crawford Grove. In Ryan's Quarters. I would like to have the board to consider a moratorium of the construction. The solar fields in the rural areas. I feel per acre as a deterrent. In 1990, they considered my home one of the five most scenic areas in the capital district. Please leave it that way. Canal. Good evening. My name is Kimberly Scanell. I live at 257 Crawford Road in Rotterdam, and I'm back. I'm sorry. Two weeks ago, I called on you all to put a moratorium on all large-scale and wind solar projects to allow time and consideration to develop updated town code for both solar and wind that would genuinely reflect the vision of the comprehensive plan. I sent an email to all of you. I gave you an abbreviated list of the many New York State towns that have enacted some form of solar and or wind moratoriums. The list of towns included 
Glenville, Dwaynesburg, East Greenbush, Ballston, Broad Alban, Clifton Park, Canajoharie, and 25 more around the state. Most of these towns had a moratorium to allow an opportunity for their solar and wind code to align with their comprehensive plans. Others decided that having a moratorium would help the town take a little break and come up with some common sense proposals for their code. As you heard from our town historian, Glenville, our, our dear friends and neighbors, had some really good revenue ideas for their town. And I think that we all owe it to our residents to take a pause and take a step back and reevaluate how we can align our solar code in a manner like Glenville did. But it isn't just Glenville that's taken time to sit back and look out for its citizens. Other towns in our area have not been left with the several solar projects like we have that have been decommissioned, which are currently sitting in a state of inactivity and disrepair. It's a solar graveyard within three miles from a proposed project on Sanborn Road. Um, there's at least three projects that should have been decommissioned and haven't. So I think as a town board, you need to ask yourselves the question, huh, are we really getting what we need in decommission plans from these solar companies when they're coming to us? Some towns have decided that more stringent guidelines are important. They require a performance bond from a solar developer, not only because the solar developer says this is what the bond should be. In fact, they're making the solar applicant provide three estimates from outside contractors for the removal, eventually, of the solar panels. After they get the three estimates, those towns are saying, that's what we want in a performance bond. But that's not going to be good enough. We're going to require you to come back every three years with three more estimates. Because just like everything else is going up in price, so is the cost of decommissioning solar panels. More great ideas, but ideas that we haven't taken an opportunity to thoroughly think about and see how they could benefit our town. So again, I'm here. <laughs> I'm asking for an 18-month moratorium on all large-scale wind and solar projects. It's sensible, it's thoughtful, it's pragmatic, and it's conscientious. I urge this board to have a special meeting as soon as practically possible to discuss putting a solar and wind moratorium in place. By taking the time now to enact the recommendations of the comprehensive plan to the town's solar and wind code and to revise these codes in general, you are making an important investment for the future of this town and upholding your commitments and obligations to its citizens. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. you can stay right there and you can be good. Okay, her name, Kim. That you're Hi, doing. I'm back for Joanne Darling. Thank you. Um, actually, she has a, it's Joanne Darling Wagner. She lives at 2862 Ronix Corners Road. Um, she's my neighbor, and she sent an email because she wasn't able to be here this evening. Um, she sent it to the town clerk, but we didn't have enough time to um, have it printed for the town clerk to read, so I will read it. I am writing as a concerned resident of the town of Rotterdam regarding our comprehensive plan, and in particular, the potential inclusion of additional solar arrays in our town. Several weeks ago, I attended an informational meeting regarding a proposal by East Lake Partners for an extensive solar farm to be situated directly behind my property at 2862 and 2846 Rhinex Corners Road. The prior year, I attended a town meeting regarding a placement of a solar array opposite my home, directly across Rhinex, in the town of Princetown. It seems our beautiful area is being overwhelmed with the rush to cash in on solar, a new technology which still cannot be fully validated in regards to its worthiness, 
both in value to our town and in its effects on our environment. There are still many questions in my mind which have not been satisfactorily answered regarding cost, tax burden, fire safety, traffic, disruption to our peace during and both during construction, dismantling, and recycling of panels, etc. It seems evident that we need more time to process the cost versus benefit of solar array placement in our town. Very personally, my husband and I purchased our property 37 years ago solely because of the serene beauty of the area, knowing it to be a safe place for our youngsters to create childhood memories. After investing much to make our property beautiful, the thought of waking up to the eyesore of solar panels interrupting the delightful panoramic view off my front deck was unbearable. Now, a new year and a new solar proposal, this time in my backyard, where for years we have enjoyed delightful wildlife and sunrises. I have visited the High River Energy Project in the town of Florida. It is extensive, rambunctious, and peppered with a constant beeping of construction vehicles, disrupting the serenity of the area and the peace of the neighbors. I know that many oppose the project, and despite the efforts of a lawyer provided, were unable to stop the incursion of this solar monstrosity. The monolith solar array sits on 5S, a costly, useless eyesore that is not producing energy. It is my understanding that there are several arrays sitting useless. Do we really want a town scattered with abandoned arrays, leaving the aura of a ghost town? Why not declare a moratorium on these solar proposals in our town until we have assurance in the effectiveness and benefits of solar, the veracity and financial stability of the business owners, and the full confidence that such proposals should be included in Rotterdam's comprehensive plan? Most sincerely, Joanne Darling Wagner. Thank you. Thank you. Brendan Scannell. Good evening. My name is Brendan Scannell. I live at 257 Crawford Road. I will be brief. Um, my wife is just who you spoke to. Is, um, she's already put it out there. Uh, I just wanted to put my feelings out there. I couldn't agree more with Gina, my neighbor across the street. I'm a teacher, biology teacher. I teach about uh, alternative energy. The, problems with fossil fuels, the carbon that's building up in our atmosphere, but I also teach about habitat destruction, biodiversity loss. You're going to take an area, this goes forward, and you're going to take it from a high biodiversity area to that something down to field mice and voles and some red hawks that will feed on them, and that's what you're going to have at the end of it. It's counterintuitive to me to clear a forest out that takes carbon out of the atmosphere so that we can put something in that's going to reduce the amount of fossil fuels we use. It, it's just counterintuitive. That's all. I suggest that we stop and think about it. I think a moratorium is a fine idea. Thank you very much. Thank you. Patty Medowitz. Patty Madelitz. I live at 457 Sanborn Road. I'm here to talk about the comprehensive plan. Um, I agree with our comprehensive plan as far as um, preserving the natural resources and the scenery and all that. We, a, a bunch of us have, have brought that up and talked about it. But what I do want to share with you all is I attended the Princetown Town Board meeting last week, or in the first, I believe it was. And um, the Princetown, you probably all know that Rhinex Road on one side is Rotterdam, on the other side is Princetown. They're our neighbors, and it's all Pattersonville. So um, the Patterson, the um, Princetown Comprehensive Plan, Section 10, Number 9, states that the public desires to keep Princetown rural with open spaces, clean environment, and low-density development. Section 11 of Princetown's Comprehensive Plan speaks to preserving the rural character of Princetown 
It also speaks to the shared services with adjacent municipalities, which is us. We share a fire department and we're neighbors. So our vision, Broader Dam residents' vision, aligns with Prince Town's vision. Um, a 150-acre solar farm that our neighbor Prince Town in Pattersonville is going to see right right there, out there, does not fit with either of our town's comprehensive plans. Um, the NY CERTA site has a lot of information on how to, as um, Jane Schaefer said and um, Kim said, information on how to make revenue for the town and how to get some benefit. And there's some sections on there on how to do local power. So I think a moratorium is very much in order to keep with our town's vision, our neighbor, and all of Pattersonville town vision of what, how to preserve our rural and beautiful um, scenery. And I don't know if you've all have been out there and, it, and I, it brought, brought one of our, our the neighbors to tears thinking that that's going to be destroyed. Um, it's, you really have to go out there and you really have to go out there when the sun is setting and it is breathtaking. I went to Sterling Road and Sterling Road is in the town of Princetown. Um, looking out, you can see um, a field that's on Rannox Road that's not that big of a field and you can see it clearly from Sterling Road. And I can't even imagine what, up to the right of that, what 150 acres of solar panels is going to look like. Um, somebody talked about the wildlife. I mean, we, we have bears. I mean, maybe the bears will start going down and, you know, going to Rotterdam Junction for their, their food and, and snacks, you know, because they're going to be driven out of their habitat. So um, definitely support a moratorium and preservation of our town. And thank you very much. Appreciate it. Kyle Quinn. Good evening, my name is Kyle Quinn. I live at 807 Sanborn Road. I had actually a pretty short checklist here and everybody else hit it. I just wanted to, you know, talk about a couple of, uh, you know, concerns I have. I agree with everything plus some that everybody else said. Um, I lived in Rotterdam my entire life, 32 years. Um, I've lived up off of Rhinox Corners Road. I grew up on Greg Road, moved to my first, bought my first house on the top of Crawford Road. I'm, Fix that up, and I moved one more road down and built my dream home on a on a hard work earned piece of property that I purchased. And being up there my entire life, working in Rotterdam, working down in the bottom of the hill every day, driving down there, on my way home on a regular basis, I still stop because it still amazes me the view that you get at night sunset, everything else. I, I mean, I still stop. I take pictures on my phone. I've got like a hundred of them. What changes? I don't know, but it's a beautiful area. And I, I drive home through Glenville every day and I come across Glenville. I come down uh, Rector Road by their gun club over there and I can see my house and I can see the whole top of the mountain up there and it's a beautiful spot. It's nice to see that everything is just, there isn't developed. It's not built on. There's no you know, even that side, there's no power lines running down that side of the mountain. And just to see the top of that mountain to get clear cut and to see a big solar array on top of that mountain just is absolutely, uh, it's crazy to me. And uh, I just, uh, I would like for you guys to call on moratorium on this and, um, you know, basically uh, what everybody else said, just uh, get your ducks in a row and, and, and come up with a good plan for it. So. so it's safe to say that you bought that property based on that view? Absolutely. I bought that property. I was actually, it came up on, uh, it was on a, a, you know, on a Zillow or something. And I, I, we were, I was going to build actually on my parents' road. And, uh, and my one friend worked for National Grid and he had been up at that property previously. And I said, oh, I can, you know, there's nothing up there. I lived up there my whole life, never made my way up to the top of Sanborn Road, which I'm sure a lot, not a lot of people have. And uh, 
he goes, hey, you might want to go up there and look at the view that you have from up on top of that mountain. And I went up there. Right then I knew I didn't care what the property, what it was going to do. I was going to make it. I was going to make it happen one way or another. And I did. And, you know, to get a, to, you know, to have a neighbor call um, that's a caretaker of the property that is, you know, proposed for solar, to have them call me and tell me that they're going to possibly put an entire, you know, 150, to, to destroy the whole area that, you know, I mean, I know I don't own it, I get that. And uh, to do that, and then not only that, but to put a substation 300 feet away from my new house that was constructed well before any of this planning process happened is just mind blowing to me. So um, I really, uh, you know, I definitely agree with moratorium. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody in the audience that wants to speak about it but hasn't signed up? Mr. Mintz? My name is Melvin Mintz. I live on Helderberg Avenue. <clears throat> in listening to this from all the people, I would like to ask the board, I would ask the supervisor, if you can call a special meeting among yourselves immediately to address this problem and not wait a week and two weeks or three weeks or two weeks to the next meeting, public meeting, I'd like you to get together as soon as possible to review this, to get some of the information that they said of our neighbor at Glenville and so forth immediately. Maybe you have it, I don't know. But to sit down as a board, take a hard look at this, put together your resolution or whatever, and have a special meeting for the public to attend before two weeks from now, Wednesday, because it seems to be highly concerning of the people. The second thing is that in my lifetime, I look at the political people across our country and everything, and what goes on in the United States for all these years, that sometimes government doesn't listen to or do things for the people. And that's what government is supposed to do. And the people are speaking and they're getting fed up. We have national problems, but we can only deal with right now what's local. And you're local. And I'm asking you, as a board, I know you're all busy, but if you can get together tomorrow or the next day, discuss this, put something together, if the lawyer can sit down with you, get your information, you've gotten some paperwork, and come up with a proposal for a moratorium has been requested, and then take a hard look and give the public the opportunity further to see what you're proposing or thinking of proposing and not wait two weeks and four weeks to work on this. The people of the town of Rotterdam are speaking, and government, in my opinion, is supposed to do what the people want, not what sometimes, don't misunderstand me please, but what government thinks and people in the political world think about doing. And thank you. Thank you. And I would like to introduce uh, resolution number 302.22 uh, to hold a public hearing regarding an 18 month moratorium on solar projects. We have a special meeting that's scheduled for the 18th already. And I would like to uh, make that motion to hold that public hearing. What number did you say, Evan? It would be, well, I would, I would say 302.22, right? No, there's, there's three. The bottom, you want the bottom, don't you? Evan? 318? Okay, thanks. <coughs> you want me to repeat that motion, Diane? No, that's okay, because I that's don't have it on the tape. I just wanted to make sure the number was right. Okay, thank you for the correction. Evan? Evan? 
sorry. Could you please make a motion to direct Mr. Tingley? Well, but I'll just I'll just say it. so because there's process involved mm -hmm. that we have to follow. Okay. Uh, my suggestion is that the board um, consider a motion to direct mm -hmm. a moratorium on solar and wind energy projects um, for the board's introduction and consideration. Okay, let me let me retract the original motion and I'd like to introduce motion number three one eight point two two to appoint our counselor, Mr. Tingley, to create a what you, moratorium legislation. Yeah. A moratorium legislation uh, regarding uh, a, a moratorium on all solar projects that we can provide. So, Mr. Christo? Yes. Mrs. Miller-Greer is absent. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. So, four yes and one absent. The resolution passes. Yes. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> is there anybody else in the audience that wants to speak about the comprehensive plan? Uh, Brent, Brenda Trojan, 1033 6th Street. I agree with everybody up here that spoke. If you could put a moratorium like that on apartment buildings here in the main part of Rotterdam. We, we, well, I have seen what happened when you put those apartments up, when you cut down vegetation. I have seen wildlife come into my home, not, not in, my, in my property. You need to stop this project because where those animals are going to go? You know, if you can put a moratorium, and I don't want you guys waiting two, three, four weeks to come up with a come up with a proposal and do it or not do it, because you got to do it quickly. You got to do it quickly because not only I don't know the solar the solar panels that are on Princetown on um, where the old ball, ball field used to be. <laughs> Is that still operable, or is it just hanging there doing nothing? I mean, I don't know. But that is an eyesore. And you, 150 acres, 150 acres of beautiful land that needs to stay beautiful. Not, not, not put up solar panels and cut down trees. That's the problem. Everybody wants to build and cut down trees. They don't realize what the after effect is of doing that. So I, I, I hope you guys put a moratorium on it real quick, like within a week or two. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience who would like to speak about the um, <clears throat> comprehensive plan and didn't sign up? Chuck, is there anybody on the Zoom meeting that had anything to say? <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. I'll second that motion. Okay, the motion was made by Mr. Johnson and seconded by Mr. Christo to uh, close the public hearing. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mrs. Billiver absent? Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. To close the public hearing. Motion passed. Now, opening the public hearing on the 2022 preliminary budget for the town of Rotterdam. Is there anyone who wishes to speak? There's nobody that signed on the Okay. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak about the 2023 uh, preliminary budget, but maybe they didn't sign up? I signed up. I just signed up for the budget, though, but I don't know what I'm going to be talking about privilege on the floor is when you're going to you sign up right. okay if she wants to talk in the public oh, hearing really? if she wants to talk oh. on the budget okay. she should talk during yeah. the public hearing oh. if you want to okay i don't know if she signed up here. if it's on the budget that's the appropriate time okay yes, absolutely there's no money in the trucks 6th street this is about the agreement that Rotterdam made with Viaport and has everything to do with the budget. Sorry. 
And you guys got like, um, Lucy, you got some explaining to do, which you guys do. Why is the residence responsible to pay a quarter of a million dollars to Viaport when it is an illegal, unenforceable contract with the town and with Viaport? I know I'm not going to get an answer tonight, but I hope you guys will be answering it. As far as the budget goes, where is that quarter of a million coming from? I'm rounding it off to a quarter of a million. The other thing I have to say about the one million dollar that we're getting back, Viaport sat on that one million dollars since January. I will assume they got it in January. It was passed last December, they got it in January. So from January to now, it wasn't in somebody's desk drawer. I'm sure they invested that money someplace. And if they did invest it, they didn't invest it in the bank. You don't get any money in a bank. I'm sure they invested. They're very smart business people. I won't say what I'd like to say, but if they invested it, and if they got a return on that investment, why are we paying them, again, a quarter of a million dollars to get out of a deal that we should not have been in in the first place, that it was unenforceable? It was a, basically an illegal transaction between Rotterdam and Viaport. Now, according to what I read very quickly, it says that um, something about why we're paying them because we broke a lease. How can we break a lease when it was not a lease in the first place? Just wondering. And the other thing, I'm just wondering, because Viaport is very quiet about this whole thing. Did Viaport get a little heads up on the fact that th this board was going to nullify the lease? Just seems funny that we nullified now they, and we, we're giving them a gift of a quarter of a million dollars. It's part of the budget. And where is that? Where is that in the budget? Where is that quarter of a million in the budget? Who's paying for it? Because I don't feel the residents of Rotterdam should be paying for it. I'm sorry. It was an illegal transaction. And the other thing is, I want to know the process of getting the lease agreement, the, the agreement that the town board made with Viaport. I would like a copy of that le of, of that agreement between Viaport and Rotterdam. Just let me know what the process is. I don't know if I have to do a FOI thing. Who do I do it with? But I would like a copy of that agreement. Also, I would like to know who negotiated the agreement. And the other thing, how come if this was a non, you couldn't enforce this lease? Why did it? Whoever was on the negotiating team, which I don't know who was, and I know you're going to be upset with me, but, well, he is. Um, it just lost my train of thought. Why, why, why didn't you guys fight for the residents of Rotterdam? Why didn't you go to court with this? If it's not an enforceable lease, why didn't you fight for the residents of Rotterdam? And if Viaport is such a good neighbor to Rotterdam, which is, which is what I was told at, at a couple of meetings, that they're good neighbors. Why don't you just give us the million dollars back and not and not the town around and give them a gift of a quarter of a million dollars? I want to know why. You're saying you're saying it's space the rent that they would have lost. Well, from January to now, that million dollars was supposed to renovate. They didn't even do anything with it. I just want to know, I know, I know you're gonna do this in a second. I, I got you. I just want to know, Rotterdam deserves a hell of a lot If you do this with this deal, the next deal that comes up, we're going to go through the whole thing again. You guys got voted in for your transparency, and I don't see transparency. I'm sorry. I just don't. And I think the Rotterdam is, is being given, the, the residents of Rotterdam are being given the middle finger by the town board and by Viaport. Because if Viaport was such a great neighbor, such a good neighbor to Rotterdam, they would have just gave the million dollars back. But I don't know who negotiated. And the other thing, and I know I gotta go, 
Was there, was there, no, I mean, okay, you know, you got a quarter of a million. What was our counter, our counter to the quarter of a million? What did we say we would do? These are questions that we need to know. I know it's a done deal. The airport got a Christmas present. They got a great Christmas present. But we need, to, we need answers as to why this went down the way it did. Thank you for your time. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak about the preliminary budget? Mr. Natale? Oh. No. Good evening, Frank Natale, 2041 Caldecott Road. I just have a, I don't know if you can answer my question now, but I just wanted to get clarification on Water District 5 and the uh, charge. Um, it looks, uh, and well, wait a minute on the charge. I was just um, wondering about the debt service. What are we paying for the debt service for uh, Water District 5? Could you answer that now, or you just want me to leave that? Leave? Do it later? We'll look at it later. Okay. Yeah, I figured you can't, you know. It's 285 pages, I understand. So I was wondering, because uh, according to my... Uh, bills, the um, debt service last year was $20.10, but the budget showing now, I think, if I'm understanding the budget right, because I don't, I don't have a style manual, um, it's now, it looks like it's zero. And so, um, I wanted clarification on that because now the water bill has gone down for me, 157.89 to 134.85. Now, I heard Samantha say that um, the reason why they moved that to separate billing is because you can't, that's considered a utility. So the, op the operations and maintenance is considered a utility. You can't, it's not part of the property tax. But is the debt service part of the property tax? So that's kind of one, if I can get clarification on, is the debt service part of the property tax? And is the operation and main maintenance on a separate billing considered a utility, like Samantha explained a couple meetings ago? Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Is there anybody else on the preliminary budget that would like to speak? Chuck, is there anybody on Zoom that wanted to make any comments? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for the preliminary budget. I'll second it. Yes, motion by Mr. Dodge and seconded by um, Mr. Christou. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Marrera absent. Mr. Dodson? Uh, yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Motion passes. Okay, we now move on to privilege of the floor. Ms. Marco, is there anyone who wishes to speak? Dean Romano? Good evening, everyone. My name is Dean Romano, and I'm the Executive Director for Rotter and the MS. Um, about two weeks ago, eight, uh, 18 days to be exact, I was up here to speak with you about Rotter and the MS and about um, EMS in our town. And in that 18 days, Rotter and the MS has done 151 calls, three cardiac arrests, uh, I'm sorry, three assaults, five cardiac arrests, 26 heart attacks, 22 strokes, 27 traumas, 21 Behavioral industry, uh, behavioral health issues, and what I want to talk specifically about tonight is 51 public assists. And one of those public assists, um, which happened on Sunday night, wrote this letter. And I got that letter in the mail today, and I want to read you this letter. And um, it's dated 11-7, that the next morning. Dear caregivers, I thank God I can call you whenever I need you. Since my daughter could not come and I couldn't get up, I called you again last night because although I tried hard, I could not get up by myself. 
I wish I could win the lottery so I could help you. I am so sorry to hear you may not have, you may have to stop helping us. What are we going to do? If we have to wait for another responder, it may take too long to get there. Um, please help, uh, please thank Evan and Nicole. They helped me out last night. I thank God I wasn't hurt and I thank God for you. So this is the letter that I received in the mail today. And she is one of the 51 public assists. And I want to talk specifically about public assists this, this evening because public assists are the thing that we now have to charge for that we no longer we didn't charge for before when we had town funding. When the town funded EMS and had a line item in the budget and the paramedics were with the police department, before all that went away, um, public assists and those types of things um, were free. We would send the, the paramedic and they would go and do whatever it is. Um, this poor lady is going to get a bill because she fell, fell. She needed assistance to get up. And every time now, because of the defunding of the EMS system in the town of Rotterdam, every single time we roll the wheels on the ambulance, someone has to get a bill. And so I want to, um, with this letter in mind, I want to just reflect again on the comprehensive plan. And I know that that is closed, but I just want to read one of the comprehensive plan goals. And it's infrastructure and governance, um, and it was under... Um, to ensure the availability of public facilities, infrastructure, and emergency services that adequately serve and uh, serve the present and future needs of Rotterdam. This population is growing in Rotterdam. Every year we do considerably more calls. And so I'm asking for the town to seriously consider what it is that we have to do to secure and to to stabilize EMS in the town of Rotterdam once and for all. It seems like every so many years we go through a cycle where we are no longer able to sustain the funding method and we have to look at what ways to do it differently. Every other municipality in the region, majority of the municipalities, um, like our municipality, funds their EMS. And what is it that you're funding? You're funding readiness. You're funding an ambulance to be ready to respond to this patient right here. And so I'm asking you, and I'm just encouraging you, you have the opportunity to fix this forever. And I'm asking you to please establish an ambulance district so that patients like this, town residents like this, will have an ambulance respond in a very timely manner to their needs and not have to receive a bill. Thank you. Brenda, so did you want to talk about the water builder? Couple of, in a way, not good to the to the EMS. Over the summer, I, my my neighbor almost passed out. Rotterdam ambulance came. A week later, she received a bill for $500. So I almost assumed that um, it was free. Evidently, it's not. So the quarter of a million dollars that Rotterdam gave to Viaport could have supported Rotterdam's ambulance. Sorry, I am going to be. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a pain about this because nobody's going to give me answers as to why that deal went down. I know you can't give it now, you can't talk now. I hope under miscellaneous, you could at least address it. As far as the water bill goes, now I, I um, looked at my 2021, 2021 taxes. We had the $75 fee, and then in the um, in the land tax, it was forty dollars and twenty three cents. So it came to one hundred and fifteen dollars and twenty three cents on District Five. Um, twenty twenty two water bill was one hundred and fifty seven dollars. So from twenty one to twenty two, the increase was not twenty dollars. It was forty two sixty six twenty dollars and and change. Now from 
2022 to 2023, and I'm going by what the Gazette wrote, so I know you can't trust the papers 100%. The decrease is $20.04. So if you take from 2021 to 2023, it's a decrease of 20. We're not, we're, it's a decrease. We're not, getting, we're not getting any help. The residents aren't getting any help. And my question, too, is not only this, what about the other districts that are paying anywhere from 600 to 1400 What's happening to them? And again, I'm, I'm going to support the gentleman from the EMS because where are people going to get 500 bucks to pay to come and help help them out? I don't understand why Rotterdam doesn't 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 provide that service anymore. But we can give Viaport a quarter of a million dollars for what I don't know, and that needs to be explained. Thank you for your time. Is there anyone who didn't sign up who would like to speak at Privilege Before? You're entitled. Melvin Mays, Big Mouth. Uh, a while back, I mentioned when we were talking about the water bill, I requested, and I know you've got a lot to do, about looking at why we have different districts in the town of Rotterdam because certain districts are paying for the water the exorbitant amount and the district I'm in not paying anywhere near what they are. And I think the increase that we might have if it became Rotterdam one district total. I don't know if it can be done, but I'd like you to look at that and deal with it. Uh, it would save these other districts that are paying a big water bill. When I remember someone said $600 or something in one of the districts, and we were paying 158 or something in where I live. And uh, I think that when it was combined, there was hardly any increase, $20 or $30, in the district that I live in. And it's affordable, so that it's affordable throughout Rotterdam. It should be equal, in my mind, for all re residents. Uh, again, going back to government, looking out for the people, with the people requesting again, changing the subject, that quarter of a million dollars, I don't think it's in our budget. I think it's coming out of the million dollars, if the way you mm -hmm. understood it. No, it's not. And, excuse me. What? Excuse me. Yes, I got that. Okay. I don't think it's in our budget that we're paying. I think it's coming out of the million dollars, the way I understand it. And uh, she did bring up the point of if it was an illegal contract, not necessarily from our standpoint, from the standpoint also of them agreeing to something, there's a responsibility there. But that becomes the lawyer's advice and understanding and looking at all that. And if there can be a review of that again, even though you've come to some agreement maybe you could take another hard look at that. That's what I think is being requested. And taking a hard look at how it was set up originally. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that maybe didn't sign up but would like to speak on the privilege of the floor? Can I make a no. clarification, please? It needs to be made. I, I... Yeah. Well, then, excuse me, you guys need to clarify about that million dollars. Um, Chuck, is there anybody on Zoom that would like to speak under privilege of the floor? Okay. And no one else? Closing privilege of the floor, and we'll move on to resolutions. 
Our first resolution is resolution 302 of the year 2022. The clerk will read. To accept town board meeting minutes. I'll make a motion. Motion by Mr. Pristou. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Dodson. Anything on the question? Clerk will read the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera absent. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Resolution passes. Resolution number 303 of the year 2022. The clerk will read. To accept revenue for the town clerk's office for October of 2022. <coughs> I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dotson. Do I'll I have second a second? It. Second by Mr. Christou. Any, on the, anything on the question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera is absent. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. So five, uh, four yes and one absent. Resolution passes. Resolution number 304 of the year 2022, the clerk will read. To adopt a negative declaration under seeker for the proposed enactment of introductory local law <coughs> seven of 2022. Is there any discussion? I'll make the motion. A motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Yeah. Second by Mr. Christou. Anything on the question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller absent. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Next resolution is resolution number 305 of the year 2022. The clerk will read. To enact introductory local law number seven of 2022. I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Uh, this is the chicken legislation. Yes, yes it is. We can't hear. I'm sorry. I'm going to enthusiastically vote yes, and I'd like to explain my vote. In my opinion, uh, I think people, I think especially with our younger children, anything that would get them out to the open air, learning how to tend to animals, learning how to get, you know, roll up their sleeves and set up a chicken coop and clean a chicken coop and retrieve fresh eggs. And it's an hour maybe or two a day. They don't have that electronic device in their hands. I think is very welcome and a wonderful idea. I vote yes. Mrs. Miller. Mrs. Miller Herrera is absent. Mr. Dotson? I will also vote yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one absent. <laughs> Our next resolution is resolution 306 of the year 2022. The clerk will read. To authorize Humana Health Insurance Renewal. I'll second. make that motion. Motion by Mr. Christou. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller-Marira absent. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Resolution passes. Resolution number 307 of the year, yeah, 307 of the year 2022. The clerk will read. To declare two police vehicles obsolete. Do I have, is there any? I'll make that motion. Okay. Motion by Mr. Dotson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. Any question? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera absent. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Uh, resolution passes. Resolution number 308 of the year 2022. The clerk will read. To authorize an agreement with Lane Christensen Company for the cleaning and rehabilitation services of well numbers 1, 4, and 5. Any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dotson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera is absent. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Resolution passes. Resolution number 309 of the year 2022. The clerk will read. To authorize an agreement with ABS Solutions LLC for radio system equipment and installation for water storage tanks. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera is absent. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Resolution passes. Resolution 310 of the year 2022, the clerk will read. To authorize a supervisor to execute a third amendment to an engineering consultant agreement. Any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? 
I'll second. Second by Mr. Dodson. And the question? <coughs> Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller is absent. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Resolution passes. Resolution 311 of the year 2022. Clerk will read. Call for bids for two Navistar model HV 507 SFA single axle trucks equipped with snow equipment and dump body. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani on the question. Larry, just out of curiosity, how old are the vehicles these are replacing? 20, 25 years? 20 plus years. 20 plus years. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Absolutely, yes. Mrs. Miller absent. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Resolution passes. Resolution 312 of the year 2022. Clerk will read. To authorize New York State Department of Transportation to undertake certain design, adjustment, and repair work to town utility facilities. Is there any discussion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani on the question. Uh, I think it's important to note here that this is on the State Department of Transportation dime. All we are doing is giving them permission to come into the town and do the work. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Milherrera absent. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Resolution passed. Resolution number 313 of the year 2022, the clerk will read. To amend resolution number 21.22 of the year 2022, appoint Kathy Fisher as safety inspector. Any discussion? I'll make the motion. A motion by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Christou on the question. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera absent. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Resolution uh, passes. Resolution number 314 of the year 2022, clerk will read. To enter into an agreement with Labella Associates for Engineering Services related to Sewer District 7. <clears throat> Any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. Christou. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Mastriani on the question. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller absent. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Resolution passes. Resolution number 315 of the year 2022. The clerk will read. To approve budget transfers to the 2022 budget. Okay. Is there any discussion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Mr. D uh, Dodson. Second. Mm -hmm. Second by Mr. Christou. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera absent. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Resolution passes. Resolution number 316 of the year 2022, the clerk will read. To authorize the purchase of one pickup truck. Okay. Any discussion? Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. I'll motion. second. Motion by Mr. Dodson, second by Mr. Christou. On the question, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera absent. Mr. Dodson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Resolution passes. Resolution number 317 of the year uh, 2022, the clerk will read. Mm -hmm. To schedule a special meeting of the, of the town board. Motion. Motion made, made by Mr. Dodson. Do I have a second? Seconded. Second by Mr. Mastriani on the question. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mrs. Miller absent. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Mastriani? Yes. And Mrs. Collins? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Resolution passes. Are we doing resolution? 318. Motion. You've already passed a motion That's authorizing me, directing me to prepare right. for more time. So there's no resolution. Okay. That concludes our resolutions for tonight. Do any of the board, me do any of the board members have a liaison report they'd like to read? Or just want to reiterate again, Mary, to get Madam Supervisor, that it's Friday, November 11th at 2.30 here at Tom Hall. Determine whether determining indoors or out, or we have the <coughs> Veterans Day services, which is a very nice ceremony to get to see a lot of the you know surviving veterans are still around.
Korean War. I don't know if we have any residents left from World War II. Um, I know we still move as long as there's a line is around, but uh, still it's a nice event. You know, we're more than welcome to return. Anyone else under the on report? about miscellaneous? Uh, I'd like to address some of the public's comments regarding miscellaneous. Um, <clears throat> first of all, the Water District Number 5 Budget Debt Service. Uh, on page 71 is the debt service for Water District Number 5. That amount is $239,901. If you go to Roman numeral 2 at the end of the budget, you will see uh, as you come down that we're using the fund balance to pay for that portion of the debt service and so there would be no charge on your January tax bill for debt service but you would see the normal O&M charge in June which is the 134 number. Um, I'd also like to address I think uh, let's see Melvin left uh, but there's always this conversation again about uh, parity that sees everyone should pay the same for uh, water and sewer districts uh, the beauty of it is is we deal with town law when we talk about water and sewer districts and generally they're called benefited districts because not every one of the town in Rotterdam enjoys uh, you know water uh, portable water that's a municipal water service or sewer service um, so residents in our town have the ability to get those services by forming special districts, uh, which we have several of them in the town of Rotterdam. Water district number five tends to be one of our very large water districts up on the hill here. That serves probably over 10,000 customers. Um, and it has a pretty significant budget. Uh, and as I just mentioned to you, it has some debt service, but more importantly, it has an all-num charge that each individual user in the district pays $134. Um, Rotterdam Junction actually has two different uh, water districts. Um, the Hamlet area, the main Hamlet area, Bridge Street, um, is a district number three. Uh, that has some debt service associated with a water storage tank that was constructed several years ago, and they're paying on that water storage tank because they're the only ones that benefit from that water storage tank in that district. So the comment always is made, why should residents on the top of the hill pay for uh, infrastructure that's associated with a benefit in district that only benefits the people of Rotterdam Junction. Well, the reason we have town law relating to district is for that very purpose. That they need to pay for their benefited uh, improvements that occur in that district. Rotterdam Junction also has a district number four. It's actually an extension of the water district number three heading east uh, along Route 5S past SI uh, and continuing down towards 890. Residents in that area uh, during the day uh, petitioned the town to form a new water district there so that they would have municipal water service. While it's not for water district number three residents to pay for their extension because they requested it. So they have debt service associated with their request to have potable water, which they agreed to pay for the debt service associated with that infrastructure. Water District Number 5 does not get to pay for that infrastructure because it doesn't benefit them. So, what do we have here? We have Rotterdam Junction paying a much higher number for water service uh, than Water District Number 5 or gear up on top of the hill because they're paying debt service for a water storage tank that, that is getting close to, closer to being retired. Okay? So in addition to that, the residents that are in benefited area uh, the District 4 are paying for their priority chair of that water storage tank because they benefit from that service. In addition, they have to pay for their capital costs associated with their district extension. That's just debt service. Well, they're a special district as well. They have wells, they have infrastructure that needs operation and maintenance. So we determine there's a budget for that. Very simple calculation. There's a number of units down there that pay for the budget that's been appropriated for their operation and maintenance. So they get two bills. They get their debt service bill that's in January, significantly higher than Water District Number 5. In addition to that, they get a bill in June for their O&M cost. Okay? So <clears throat> the board is not arbitrarily up here just making decisions for what our residents are charged for service. They're charged based on complying with um, general municipal law, town law, relating to special districts. 
That's why they are charged with their charge, and it's clearly shown in our budgets for their appropriations, any revenue that we receive from them, any fund balance that we might use, okay, to deduct um, off those expenses, and then simple calculation, we know the number of users down there, we come up with, hey, what is their prorated cost? Um, and we try to be very transparent in the budget uh, of where those numbers are coming from, and, and it's important every year uh, at budget process they're shown because guys like me, I love to go back and look at, hey, what did they do in 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22? That provides a good frame of reference for us and how these systems are being operated and how different boards actually uh, deal with the costs associated with those districts. And I think this board's been very transparent in the fact that we need to improve our infrastructure in the town of Rotterdam, and, and uh, you will see changes for the next several years in those numbers that will be clearly stated in the budget. Thank you. I'm just curious, uh, I really uh, I this question. I did answer it last week, so I'll just repeat basically what I said last, last meeting, okay? Regarding the $250,000 settlement, yes, this board declared uh, nullified police. That does not mean that an opposing attorney or attorneys would say that, okay, that's your, your version of it. We read the version differently. We read the law differently, okay? Now, here's the risk. You take this to court, first of all, you know, ask any attorney what it costs to send that attorney to court. It could be a lot more than $250,000, number one. Number two, if we lose that case, we could be responsible for the entire lease, would be, which will be over $5 million. So, again, to repeat what I said last meeting, okay, that if they felt that $250,000 is fair because that property came off the market and they had the opportunity to lead us for up to $5 million, Okay, whatever happened, happened. You know, I've accepted my portion of responsibility of publicly, I've owned my, my portion of that as part of the previous administration. But I think the $250,000 settlement was fair for both parties and fair. And I think it shows very clearly that Via Port is not the enemy and that Via Port was, was fair in the fact that they were willing to basically cover the costs of when that when that property was off the market. And again, if we did go to court, you also have to look at the opportunity of losing that case and being responsible for over five million dollars. And so, I, I'll follow up on that uh, sentiment from Evan relative to uh, the position that we're in. And I I, I, I'm a, I have a love for editorials. I thought the Gazette did a really good job, and that editorial should be read by everyone. Um, they articulated the position that the board members uh, were in relative to that transaction and how we dealt with it. Um, and uh, I thought that the, the paper did an excellent job with that editorial. I, I recommend that you guys pull it up and read it. And there's no guarantee that they were going to give us anything back. You know, we offered to take the deal to put it behind us so that we could move forward. But you guys were complaining a couple months ago, you know, get that million dollars, get that million dollars. So we tried. We thought we made a good deal. Um, that we can move forward from. And could you clarify where that quarter of a million is coming from? Because I was told that the last meeting, it cannot be taken out of a $1 million settlement. And the gentleman over here says it's coming out of there. That's okay. so, so. And I, excuse me, one more thing. I, I know I shouldn't be talking. Never said Viaport was an enemy of Rotterdam. That needs to be cleared. So, so let's follow up on again that conversation. Uh, the, the million dollars that was uh, approved through the previous administration was part of the uh, ARPA monies that we received. Um, ARPA money needs to be used for ARPA money. So we wanted our million dollars back, again, clean ARPA money, okay? Uh, the settlement agreement allowed us to make a payment, as you mentioned, we'll round the number off to a quarter of a million dollars so, so we're not using our million dollars worth of ARPA money to make the settlement. We're using our town fund balance money to make the quarter of a million dollar payment. Would you please okay. And that's in our settlement agreement that's readily available. 
it's on the website. It's on the website. Could easily be, a, 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 and it has been out there for the public for some time now. And that means we get a check for a million dollars. Once they receive the 250, we get a check for a million dollars right. back. And home. then there's questions. Yeah. yeah, and that, so that settlement, that settlement was already done. There's a closing that occurred on that, and the town, uh, the attorney for the town can correct me, but I believe. Uh, unlike the, what you mentioned is they did hold on that check, okay? They did not put it in an interest-bearing account. They did not receive interest on it, even though we approved a resolution that said, you'll give us the million dollars plus interest. They gave us satisfactory information that indicated that they did not invest that money, okay? And there was no interest associated with it. You need to tell one town resident about that. And I'd like I, to just. I was hoping somebody would have said something when uh, the quarter, quarter million was coming on, but you guys didn't want to correct him. I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to interrupt. Don't. But I just he like, gave us false information. I was just. He like, gave us false information. Never says Viaport was an enemy of Rodney. Never said. Said, said. If Viaport was such a good neighbor, why did mm -hmm. they keep two hundred fifty thousand? I interpreted that as no, I stand no, corrected. No, 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 no. You you called me. You, you called him a bad neighbor, though. So you just called him a bad neighbor. Uh, I'm the only one that's discussing Viaport. So your comments were a direct attack on me. A response, oh. not an attack. I would like to respond to one other thing. Um, the town attorney, or the attorney for the town, uh, kept the entire board aware of what was going on with Viaport. Um, he had uh, given us... Um, options as to how we wanted to deal with it. So the entire town board was aware of how we were going to move forward with this. Uh, everybody was kept abreast of all the information as it moved forward. Uh, so I think everyone on the town board was aware of what we were doing with Viaport. Correct. Correct. Yep. You have one, one member who spoke to us, the dissenting person who said she was not aware, she was not informed about what was going on with the settlement with Viaport. I'm just telling you that's what she told us. Right. And she's allowed to voice her opinion and did. Right. No, she is allowed, but but if she's saying she wasn't involved, and you're saying every single board member was involved. As we said, she's allowed to voice gonna, her opinion and did. That, 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 that is an attack on my professional reputation. I kept this board fully informed throughout the entire process. I had multiple meetings with the board private attorney client consultations concerning the lease the issues the settlement i provided attorney client privileged memoranda throughout the process i provided draft settlement agreements to the full board throughout the process the board was fully informed and i won't sit here and continue to take attacks I when I you, no, I'm I not saying not I'm not saying you. I'm you restricted. Again. I'm restricted in what I can say. I discuss with the board. I can't get into substance, but I can tell you, this board received good, thorough, constant, professional legal advice on this issue, and this issue is now behind the town. It's over. The town has been fully released. And it has gotten a million dollars of federal funds back that it was subject to having to potentially pay back in addition to losing it. And I, I'd like to reiterate what Attorney Tingley said. I, you know, it's unfortunately he has to toot his own horn, but I, I would like to commend him for his efforts in dealing with a very, very tricky situation and getting the town's best interest uh, in our favor. So I'd like to thank him and the work of the entire board. It took a long seven and a half months to do a cost-benefit analysis and to uh, approach a very tricky deal. Yes, $243,000 is a tremendous sum of money. Um, that money came from the federal government. Uh, we are happy with the deal that we got and I, and I hope the majority of the residents of Rotterdam are. And I'd like to thank the people here that were instrumental in bringing about the conclusion it wouldn't have been able to be done without uh, the public's involvement. So there should be congratulations all around. Uh, you, you comments about, you know, playing hard-line negotiation for the $4 million. It's understood, it's noted. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have received the million dollars 
had we decided to go hard, we would have incurred legal costs. Viaport would have incurred legal costs, would have dug in, and I don't think we would have had the same beneficial outcome. So I'm happy that the deal is behind us. And, and, and again, I'd like to uh, thank Attorney Tingley for his thorough analysis of the situation and uh, for the time and dedication that he put forth in the, in the deal. And uh, I, I'm happy that it's behind us. Thank you. One, one last another topic for clarification. Um, you know, as a board, I would welcome dialogue on what to do with the Border Board Ambulance District, but I want to make one thing clear. It is a taxing district if it gets approved. That money's got to come from somewhere, so that would be an additional tax. Am I correct on that? Yes, correct. Okay, so the dialogue, it's always good to have dialogue and discuss cost-benefit analysis, to use your term, uh, Mr. Mastriani. But be clear, this is a tax, taxing district. So as long as you know that going in, if, you know, if we're tasked to have that conversation, I'd be more than happy to sit in on that conversation. I, I need to say, it's got to be on the record. I did not attack the lawyer. And I did not call me for an enemy. I'm sorry. You, you cannot say stuff to a resident and make a motion, motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.